For this video, we are back in Moho, and we're going to take a look at the drawing tools. Here we have a new document with a blank vector layer, and with the vector layer, we can start adding some shapes and drawing on screen. Now you can only use the draw tools on frame zero. If I move past frame zero, you'll note on the top left that we only have access to selecting points, transforming points, and basically anything that pertains to editing points can be accessed past frame zero. And this is because we can animate points just like anything else in Moho. And so going in and being able to adjust the points using a variety of tools can be quite useful. But here in this video, we're going to focus on the actual drawing tools themselves. So on frame zero, we're going to be taking a look at three tools in this video, the freehand tool, the draw shape tool, and then the blob brush. And perhaps we'll also touch on the eraser since it basically works the same as a blob brush, but in reverse. So starting with the draw shape tool, it's the icon that looks like three different shapes. We can click on this and it's also S on the keyboard. With this tool, you have the ability to create an auto fill or auto stroke when drawing out the shape. So essentially, you can automatically apply the fill or stroke lines to the shape right after it's completed. You can choose to add these later if you wish, but for right now, we're going to leave those enabled. You can also choose between different shapes, rectangle, oval, triangle, star, and a few others are listed. Now, in order to adjust the way your shape looks or to adjust any of the drawing tools, you'll want to pay attention to the style panel on the top right. If you don't have access to the style panel, you can come up here to window and then choose style from the list. Here, we now have access to fill, stroke, as well as line width, effects, brushes, and swatches. So here we have everything we need to pick out colors, set up our brushes, and create the shape that we want. So if I come over here and click on fill, I have the ability to change the fill color. I can come in here and let's just change this to a light red and click OK. We can leave the stroke color at black. And the width, if we come in here, let's bring this up to about 10. Now, if I come in, click and drag and draw out an oval, you can see that it's filled and has the stroke line ready to go. Once I release my mouse button, we have the shape and we can move on from there, further designing, animating, or whatever we want to do. Another thing when you're drawing out shapes is if you hold down the shift key, you can create perfectly proportionate shapes. So in this case, we could create a perfect circle versus an oval. And creating shapes is nice, but what if you want a little bit more control? Well, that's where the freehand tool can come in handy. Let's come over here and make a new vector layer. And we can hide the two ovals that we just created on layer one by clicking the visibility toggle. Here, we're now going to use the freehand tool, which is this one right here. It's also F on the keyboard. Now with the freehand tool, you can come in and freely draw wherever you see fit. So if you have a stylus or a mouse, you can just click in this case with a mouse and drag. And you can see we can come in and just draw out lines however we see fit. And this can be very useful, especially if you have a certain style in mind that you're trying to adhere to. Now, we do have some options when it comes to working with the freehand tool. If we come over here to our freehand options, we can choose a variable line width. So if we want no line width variation, we can choose that. If we're using a stylus, we can use the pen pressure, or we can choose random, which randomly varies the line width, creating a sort of pseudo freehand look. So here we can go in and adjust the variation of that if we wish. We can also choose if we want to taper the ends of our lines and apply smoothing. Smoothing will automatically make the edges smoother and produce less points to achieve this. The lower you have smoothing, when you draw with the freehand tool, your lines will stay as close to the original intended design as possible. 
But if you bring this up all the way and you start to add in different points, you can probably see that the curvature is being corrected as I go. And that's because it's smoothing things out, eliminating points to make things more simplified and more curvy. Also at the top, you have access to auto fill and auto stroke, which right now, as you can see, as we're going in and creating these lines, we are automatically creating a fill that goes along with it. You can turn that off if you wish. If you no longer want that available, you can come in here with auto fill, turn that off, and you can see now we're not automatically filling things in as we draw. But pertaining to filling, there is one more thing I would like to point out. I'm just going to hide this layer and make another one, just so it's easier to view what we're doing here. And I want to take a look at the multi-stroke fill option at the top. So what does that do exactly? Well, let's turn auto fill back on and we're just going to come in now and draw out a line, just a curved line like this. So click and drag and move up and down and release. So now we have some line work like this with a fill in place. Now let's say I wanted to continue off of this, like I wanted to draw the letter M. So if I click and drag from here and keep going, you can see now it's creating a second fill color for this particular shape. And this is going to continue now. If I were to come down here and try to continue the line work from here, it's going to create a new shape of fill regardless. So you can see it's doing that each time I place down a new line. Now, if I were to come in here and draw out that M shape with just one stroke, you can see it's acting a little bit differently now. It's just continuing along until I release and then it will finalize the fill. But what if we were to go in and use that multi-stroke fill option? Well, let's turn that on. And now we're going to go in and do the same thing we did before. Click and drag and move up. And so far, it seems like it's working like it was before. But once we release and start a new stroke line, you'll see now it's grabbing the fill and continuing to move the original fill. So we're not creating multiple fill points here. It's actually still using the original fill to create the shape that we are working on. And this can be very useful if you're creating, let's say, a character or a complex shape, and you want to make sure that that fill color remains throughout the process, then multi-stroke fill is a great option to turn on. And just to explore some other freehand tools, I'm just going to hide this once again and make a new vector. Again, just to make this easier to see, we have access to the blob brush. The blob brush is very much a freehand tool. You can come in and place down fill and lines wherever you see fit. At the top, you have access to your brush radius. This works differently compared to the width. You can't come in here and adjust the width on the style panel with the brush radius. You have to make sure you are at the top when you do this. And you can also choose if you want to use pen pressure and you also have your auto stroke and even merge strokes available here. So if I come in here and click and drag, you can see that I'm able to create a freehand drawing. But once I release, you can see that it creates a shape using the style panel settings. I went in and adjusted the width and all that, and you can see that it's adhering to that while also using pen pressure, assuming we had pen pressure available to us with the stylus. I'm currently using a mouse, which is why you're not seeing that pressure take place. And finally, the eraser works in reverse. So if we click on the eraser, we can come in here, and if we were to just erase something right here, you can see it's actually not removing the points that we use to create this. It's actually creating additional points to add that divot into the shape. So if we click on the transform points tool, you can see that it has added in these additional points right here to create that curve. It's not like we're just going in and removing a point which as you can see, can alter the shape in a different way. So the eraser is actually a drawing tool in that sense. It's not removing anything. You're simply reshaping the shapes that you have on screen. And so that's a little bit about creating shapes using the draw shape tool and the freehand tools inside of Moho. There are more tools to explore, such as the add point tool, which allows you to kind of mold things as you go along with the creation process. And we'll be covering that in the next video.